Hello, how's it going? Welcome back. Yes, you saw that title and you read it correctly. The HPI jump shot is finally worth buying. Sort of, some of the models are worth buying. Um, to give you a little history lesson for those who don't know, about five and a half years ago, HPI released the original jump shot. And um, I bought it straight away. I had the lossy high roller 110 scale rear wheel drive monster truck at the time. I bought that because it looked awesome and I was a big fan of lossy, especially back then. I was a bit of a fanboy back then. Um, and I thought lossy can do no wrong. This truck looks amazing. And the high roller was junky, it was rubbish, uh, very unreliable, very weak. And um, I ended up burning myself a little bit with that one. So I needed a replacement. I really wanted a rear wheel drive 110 scale monster truck. Uh, my brother in law had the ECX Ruckus. And before that, he had the Step Up Striker, which no longer exists, but that was a fantastic truck. Um, they're very similar to the ECX Ruckus. Both these were brilliant. But the high roller, not so much. So I need some replacement. HPI announced the jump shot. And I saw it and I thought, HPI, now here's a brand you can depend on. And so I bought it. And straight away, without driving it once, I didn't, didn't test it with the standard brush power system once, I put it straight to brushless. 4600 kV Castle Creation System, which is the exact same system I then fitted to my later Pro, Pro Line Pro MT monster truck, and, and now in my uh, Corrali Triton, it's exactly the same power system. So I fitted that, and it lasted less than one half of a LiPo charge. And the gearbox, specifically the idler gear, well, the teeth on it turned to powder, and it was about Five minutes, maybe less than that. Three minutes, maybe. Just and I, I released a video saying, "Do not make your jump shot brushless, at least not yet," um, because on the horizon there was a promise of a brushless, stronger jump shot, and I was waiting for that. Um, it wasn't a good time for HPI. Uh, there was a lot of. I mean, I was the very first person in the world, literally, to put a brushless on in jump shot because I put it as soon as it was out, straight to brushless. And um, the publicity wasn't very good. Um, eventually, stories started trickling out of people buying them, even on brushed systems. They were failing idly gears, etc. Um, a lot of people on forums were saying, "Why? Why didn't they just use the Firestorm gearbox? Because they had this fully developed metal drivetrain there already, ready to put in. You just need to build a chassis around it. Instead, they designed a new one, and it was rubbish." Um, I tried because I, I realised that the pitch and diameter and everything on the either gear for the Firestorm was identical to the jump shot. It's just that the Firestorm one was just a little bit more than, than uh, I think this, a little bit more than half the width. So what I did is I cut the collar off using a Dremel on two idler skiers from a Firestorm to the metal ones, put them together, and together with one shoulder cut off on each one, the width was exactly the same as a jump shot idler width, exactly the same. And the actual uh, surface area for the teeth was a little bit narrower because the, because the Firestorm had a shoulder. Because there was a shoulder on each side, I cut one off, so the shoulder on one side. So if I had two of them together, there's a shoulder here, a shoulder here. And so there's a little bit less overall um, teeth engagement. But it was exactly the same profile, exactly the same pitch and everything. And so I fitted this idler gear from the Firestorm and that technically worked. The problem was the either gear rang off, ran off the outside of the diff housing on the jump shot. The diff housing itself was also a gear and it was also the same plastic. And even after one run for about just under 10 minutes with the jump shot um, running this steel uh, Firestorm idlers, you could hear the gearbox clicking already as it started to damage the actual gear, which was the diff housing. So it wasn't really a viable option. It was worth trying. But it wasn't a viable, viable option at all. Um, Alan from Tame Models was brilliant. He was always on my side because that's where I got the truck from. He phoned up uh, HPI and was like, listen, if you only have chocolate with which to make your idler gears out of, could you not try at least dark chocolate rather than the current milk chocolate? Because it might be slightly stronger. HPI wasn't appreciating of that, appreciate, appreciate, uh, appreciative of that. Um, so eventually they, the rep from HBI sent Alan credit to give me a full refund because they were sick of bad publicity. But apart from that, it was almost a perfect little truck. Apart from that, 
I did say that the shell was really weak, like horrifically weak. I spent time making my jump shot look, look cooler, yeah, look much cooler than a standard one. I peeled a lot of the stickers off it because there's a big orange block, big square or rectangle. There's, there's various ones um, of this unbroken orange color, which was with the HPI logo. There's also like a little happy smiley mouth of a front grill and stuff. I peeled all that off. I also fitted these. These exact wheels and tires, these um, Proline Trencher tires on whatever wheels they are, um, and it looked great. Uh, but the the body shell was garbage. It just it tore straight away. The first run, first actually first upside down landing, it, the shell split in half. Um, I bought two shells overall, and they both were useless. Um, anyway, oh, and one other weakness was there was no bung, just like that. But I've actually put one on. There was no bung on the spur cover, so. The little adjuster from the for the um, slipper clutch poking through, and there's no bung to cover it, so grit and gravel and stuff will get in and then just whiz around and spur in the opinion. Um, so I said, look, the gearbox is the big letdown. And I concluded with this, because I got rid of the jump shot soon, soon afterwards. They gave me a full refund. I bought the parts to fix it. I, re re I returned it to completely standard. It was brand spanking new. It had been used three times in total. Uh, and I would say three times. All three times were like half a use because it just failed. Um, anyway, so I returned it to standard, back to the shop, and it was gone. Um, I did say at the time, um, this should have been, it could have been a great truck if they just given it a decent drivetrain. That's all it needed was a decent gearbox, it needed a cover on the spur, and a stronger body shell. And that would be it, that's all it needed. I mean, the rest of it, the little uh, twin plate chassis, the aluminium twin plate, was really nice looking. The front shock tower was so thick and it was awesome it was really 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 strong um it looked like a fantastic little truck it drove brilliantly it was easier to drive bear in mind it had exactly the same wheels and tires as that those were, it had those wheels and tires it had that power system in it and it was an easier truck to drive with that than that triton is now it was easier to drive okay the shocks and everything weren't as big bore as that but they were working from the, from the factory the shocks and that were a joke from the factory it was almost the perfect little truck. I just need those things fixed. I said that from the start. If they fix those problems, the jump shot will be a great truck. It just will. Quite quickly, like I said, it was five and a half years ago. Quite quickly, they released the jump shot version 2, the V2. You can still buy it. And they, they were boasting stronger drivetrain. Perfect. They also boasted a stronger body shell. Problem was, the drivetrain might have been stronger. And yes, they're talking about metal diff gears and yes it had metal diff gears the diff itself was also a gear and the outside was still plastic so they didn't fix the inherent problem the gearbox was stronger than before and still weak still too weak bear in mind you're talking about the 110 scale, scale rear wheel drive monster truck market there's some stiff competition then back then the ecx ruckus was still very well priced. Nowadays it's a little bit a little bit too expensive for what it is. But back then the ECX Rockets was the best thing for the money at the time. I think it was about 160, 170 pounds for ready to run Ruckus. And you could get the steel upgrade for that and it was absolutely bomb proof. Nowadays the prices are a bit crazy, but you're competing with that and you've got plastic in your drivetrain that's just And now you've got this. Okay there's some flaws to it and Corelli are slowly addressing them all. And I have addressed them all myself, uh, but this has got a full steel drivetrain. So you need to do better. And the V2, okay, they strengthen the body shell, I'm not sure how much stronger. Don't know, I've never experienced the V2. Hopefully it's very, very much stronger, but I don't think it will be. Maybe just be a little bit thicker. Um, horrible paint job on the V2. I think they've addressed it now, but it looked like an American flag gone wrong. It was hideous. No cover on the spur. So essentially it was the same truck. It was the same truck. It was basically my truck with the Firestorm idlers in it. It was still going to chew the drivetrain up. And again, I said at the time, fix these issues. One big, two small. Big one is the drivetrain. Small one's the spur cover and the body shell. And you will have a fantastic entry-level truck as long as you price it properly. I've always said that. said it for years. And now, finally, they've addressed it. Sort of. The new jump shot flux both the short course the sc and the mt the monster truck the flux brushless versions now have steel or at least metal um diff uh, diff housing gears 
So the diff housing, as I said, it's a big gear itself. The idler runs off it. That's now all metal. Finally, five and a half years later, the gearbox has been addressed. Finally. So. I, oh, I was going. I just. I was going to say something else, and then I hesitated, and then I didn't know which one to bring up first. They've also finally redesigned the spur cover, and it has a bung on the end. They've actually. They're so proud of it. They actually mentioned that on their advert on their website with a photo of it. So you've got the. The you used to have like the spur cover, and then you had the the adjuster coming through. Now you've got spur cover, and it's like that. It sticks out like that. And it's got a bung on the end. It's what I said five and a half years ago. It's finally done. They finally done it. And of course, they said that the body shell is stronger. And so we'll have to wait and see. And the new paint job on the flux version looks a lot better than the V2. Debatable whether it looks as good as the V1, but um, it looks pretty sharp. You could still peel off some of the stickers and change it and stuff. And with these wheels and tires on it, it'll look great. So the jump shot flux looks fantastic. Bizarrely, they're still selling the jump shot V2 as the brushed version because the flux is the brushless version. Um, it still has the plastic gearbox housing and doesn't have the spur cover. HPI, I love you, I really do, but you're weird. Some of the decisions you make are so, so strange. You've corrected the spur cover. Put that spur cover on the brushed one. You've corrected the gearbox. Put those gears in the brushed one. Have the whole family fixed. What are you doing with this? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But the good news is if you buy the brushed version, you can at least buy the cover and the, you know, the gearbox upgrades, essentially. The standard parts for the flux one, but upgrades for the brushed ones, you could buy them and fit them to your brushed one. So you could just do that, or you could just buy the, the brushless version. Um, but the point is, you can buy from HPI a fixed one, just the brushless one only. So I'm really pleased with that. I'm really pleased because I really do love HPI and I really want them to succeed. I'm glad they're on the rebound now and I'm glad they're beginning to put, push products out. Some of them look fantastic. Some of them look like retreads again, like the Savage is again for sale with a different color scheme. HPI, that's why you went bust. That's why you went bust. Okay, the Traxxas lawsuit didn't help, but you went bust because you were selling the same product unchanged year after year with a different paint job or a different set of wheels and going new. It wasn't new, it was old. It just looked sharp, that's all it was. So with this new Savage, all you've done is the same thing again. It's the same Savage, just with a different look. Um, everyone who's ever wanted a Savage has bought a savage okay you need to come out with a true replacement anyway that's off topic the point is the jump shot is now fixed and the jump shot deserves to stay it's new enough I mean, five and a half years is quite old but it's only been good for about five minutes so it's new enough that it's now worth buying as long as you keep it competitively priced the price isn't too bad um i would strongly suggest you put these upgrades onto the brushed version if you don't at least offer them as a cheap upgrade and you don't sell the the metal upgrade gears or diff housing for you know 60 quid sell it for 20 or something 25 get that upgrade affordable um and i i i hbi if you're listening you're probably not watching this and if you were you probably turned it off by now please if you're watching this consider sending me one <laughs> the reason being is Okay, I gave such bad publicity back then, um, for a good reason. I wasn't just hating on HPI. I wanted them to succeed, and they were doing a terrible job of it. If I got hold of a new jump shot flax, and it was everything I wanted the original to be, and it was everything I, I knew it could be, I would happily replace my Corrali Triton. Because the, the building blocks of jump shot were just that good. I liked it that much. I really like my Triton. It's so strong. It's actually shocked me how strong it is. Even compared to my old Pro-M Pro-MT, which I only got rid of because parts were coming stupidly rare and very expensive. But good because of Traxxas. But anyway, um, the, the Pro-M Pro-MT was incredible. That is amazing as well. Okay, I've had to address issues myself, but 
Now it's as strong as the pre I mean, even stronger than pre preempt used to be because I've never broken it. Um, but I would consider replacing it with a jump shot if the jump shot is up to that level. And I will do that if, if the jump shot is up to that level. So please consider sending me one. They're not going to. There's only two and a half thousand, not even two and a half thousand subscribers on this channel. This channel is that size. So anyway, it was worth bringing up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The point is, guys, if you're in the market for a monster truck, consider the HBI jump shot. Yeah. Never thought I'd say that in a million years. Anyway, I'm glad. It, I'm glad it's happening. I really am. Thank you for watching. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you later. Bye bye.